Mine's not over drinking and driving, but mine's kind of the different aspect, but kind of the same aspect. Um, my ex-husband, and ex, he was an alcoholic. Whenever we first met, um, I was 20, and he was three years older than me, and he could go to the store, and I couldn't. So we would always have fun, we always had friends over, we always socially drank, and uh, I got accepted into nursing school here at OSU OKC, so I stopped drinking, and he never did. Um, according to the National Council of Alcohol and Drug Dependence, alcohol is the most commonly used addictive substance in the United States. 17.6 million people, or one in every 12 adults, have an alcohol abuse or they're dependent upon alcohol. More than half of all adults have a family history of alcoholism and uh, or a drinking problem, or, and more than 7 million children live in a household where at least one parent is dependent or has abused alcohol. I have a seven-year-old, and she got to see all this. It was the worst thing ever. He would come in, and he would be, he was out in the oil field all the time, and he would work, and he would drink on the job. He had actually, I wouldn't allow alcohol in my house. I'd let him drink all the beer he wanted to because he hated it. So if he wanted it in the, in the house, he could have the beer. But he actually cut uh, in his bench seat in his uh, car. He had cut out so he could have bottles underneath there. And I didn't realize how bad it was because I didn't know that he had alcohol at all. Until one day, we were changing a bike, or a bike tire, and um, his dad died. His dad hung himself over alcohol when he was nine. And he didn't know how to make, he didn't know how to change it. And I was like, let me do it, I can do it. And he blew up. And he was like, I cannot believe, you know, my dad did this and all that. And he actually was gonna commit suicide that night. Until I called rehab, and he, I finally got him into rehab. Um, he was no longer drinking socially. I didn't, I had no idea. He was up to, I didn't find this out until rehab, that he was up to two liters of vodka a day. It got to the point to where we no longer could make our house payment. I didn't know if I was gonna have a roof over my daughter's head. Um, me and my daughter would stay in her room because we didn't know, I didn't want her to be exposed to this. Um, so he moved out of the house and um, he decided to live with his friends and drink and um, it was just me and my daughter. And the house that we uh, bought as a family, I couldn't afford on my own, so I had to, uh, I had to file bankruptcy. And I went um, to my lawyer, and it was so funny, because whenever I walked up to my lawyer, he was like, oh my gosh, I have the perfect thing for you. I was, today is his 12 year of sobriety, and his wife had started this Al-Anon program here in the city. So I went, and I, I was like, I was biting to the no, I did not want to go. I felt like a failure. I was thinking, you know, my husband had the problem, I don't have the problem. He, he's the alcoholic, I'm not. I didn't have any idea how much I was affected by alcohol on his end, on my end. Um, I didn't care anymore. I didn't care. I, my daughter went to stay with my parents a lot. Um, even though I wasn't drinking, I had no idea. So I, I met with these ladies. They're wonderful ladies. They're t there's 12 of them. Um, they meet at this church on North, uh, North 30, 63rd Street. And whenever I went in, I remember they were all in a, a big circle. And I was I walk in and they were talking about how much they wanted to kill their ex-husbands and I was like, oh, I'm in the right place. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and I was like, well, so I sat down and um, Al-Anon actually does a 12-step program just like AA does. And we sat and we talked and we found out that I wasn't alone and that there were people just like me who wanted to kill their ex-husbands and that that they were affected and they could tell their story and I got to tell mine and I no longer had that burden on me. And um, all on, I want to tell you, uh, not a lot of people know about all and on. It's not like AA, um, like he should have attended. We went, whenever in his rehab, we, uh, we had family counseling day and they said for him to stay sober and for him to, to be strong and uh, 
uh, stay with it, be abstinent of that. Um, he would go to AA and I would go to Al Anon. And I never went. I ended up, um, what caused this, me to go to, or him to move out, is I found six empty bottles. I was cleaning out um, the, my closet and I pulled down winter clothes and there was bottles up there. And so I left him a little note in the trash can that said, I don't know how many chances you need to save your own life. And that was the day he moved out. And then I went to Al-Anon and um, the 12 step program, it, it, I mean, it goes right along with A. So every single thing that the alcoholic is doing, you can bring alcoholics, um, you can bring your children, you can bring everything. It's, it's a big group of, <sighs> everything. Um, I don't know. But I learned so much from Al-Anon. Uh, it has one pur purpose, to help families with alcoholics. They do this by practicing the 12-step program, by welcoming and giving comfort to families of alcoholics, and by giving understanding and encouragement to the alcoholic. Um, you learn that you're not alone in the, pro in the problems that you face, and they have choices to lead to a greater peace of mind, whether the drinker continues to drink or not. I always thought it was my fault, and I always thought that every single thing that I did, it was because, you know, he was drinking because of me, and um, because I wasn't spending enough time with him, because I was at doing nursing all the time, or because I was playing with my daughter. Um, I had no idea. So, um, alcohol is everywhere, and many are affected more than will ever admit to. I didn't want to admit to it. And I felt like I, I, I failed my family, that I had failed everything because, you know, my, my husband just left me over alcohol. Like, that is like the worst thing to ever have, you know, said to you in your face. Um, I just want and I hope to persuade you to step in and take action because um, I want you, if you see somebody that is being affected, by their family through alcohol and stuff. I want you to step in and, and tell them, like, this is a great place to go. This is a great place to go because you won't feel alone. Um, I want to leave you with one thing that um, affected me the most um, from Al Anon, and it's the serenity prayer. Um, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. I really worked hard on trying not to crack. <laughs>